Okay, hi everyone. This is our pleasure to present our research on minimizing package loss during VM leave migration in Kerbworth. In Kerbworth Summit 2000, 2024, we are from a age computing team of China Mobile. I am Zhu Anlan. I have been working for two years and mainly interested in cloud native virtualization. Bing Bing, please introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. I'm Tommy I have been contributing to Cobol for three years. Before Cobol, I have been working on OpenStack platform for five years. And today, I will be trying out Cobol search in this talk. Okay, our talk will commence by the problems we encountered. Subsequently, we will introduce solutions both from the perspectives of CobeOVN and CobeWord. To conclude, we will present the outcomes of our work. Now it's time for Bing Bing. Hi, okay. Last year, we got a problem packaging loss during migration for more than five seconds, sometimes less than one second, sometimes more than 15 seconds. When I encountered the problem, I felt that the situation couldn't be so serious because I have never got this problem while using OpenStack NOAA with Neutron OVN. The OpenStack version is Victoria. After some investigation, we found that the root cause of the bug is Kubernetes didn't control network during migration like Neutron. Only Kubernetes control the VM migration. But Kubernetes is aware of the network, so the package loss is unpredictable. Next. How Neutron control network during migration in the OpenStack Victoria version? You can see, Open Logic Switch Part has a requested chases option. We can use this option to tell OBS network when the part should bend to the destination node and when the logical switch part should leave the source node. Before migration, the VM logical switch part requested chases should be set as the source node. And after migration, the VM logical switch part requested chases should be set as the destination node. However, in the beginning, Kubernetes didn't control the requested chases like Neutron. Kubernetes delete the source VM after migration, so the, pod, the VM pod deleted. According to the design of Kubernetes CNI, Kubernetes should just delete the source VM pod, and then let the source VM pod go. Next. Later, we talk about the problem in Kubernetes community. Then our partners remind us there was already a bad way to fix the bug. In OVSCon 2022, a new solution has been shown by Red Hat, reducing downtime with open multi chases bindings. We watched the OVSCon multi chase on YouTube and got a rough idea of how to use it and know when multi chases can reduce live migration downtime. But the details of how to use it in Kube Owen are still not clear. So next, we referred to the OpenStack Neutron code history after 2022 and found that Neutron had already changed its code from one chase to multi chases. In order to understand the development process of neutron level migration. At first, we need to know how neutron use one chases. When migration starts, neutron control open logic switch prod requests chases to use source node. After migration, neutron control open logical switch prod requests chases to use destination node. Then the OBS will know the prod has bound to the node as soon as possible and activate the OVS logic switch port. And then the VM could 
reply. But one chance is it not good enough because OBS network doesn't know when Q, you know, QVM makes the VM ready. So later, Kubernetes will start to use open multi chase expanding. Next, uh, um, how Neutron use multi chases? It seems that uh, at the Neutron code level, there is only a slight change. When migration starts, Neutron control open logical switch power requested chases to use both source and the destination node. This point is changed. And after migration, Neutron control open logic switch power requested chases to use destination node only. This point is just the same. It looks simple, but in reality, a lot of work is done in the underlying over and OVS. You can see during migration, the OVS keep cloning packets from source node to destination node. It's an amazing idea. Because of the cloning mechanism after migration, once the new VM starts, it will reply as soon as possible. But how can multi chase expanding do this when new virtual machine could reply faster than before? The key is when and how to activate new virtual machine logic switch port. Next, about uh, port. About port activation, Open use a set of ACL and label word IRP to activate the new port allocation. At first, when migrating start, Kubernetes should set Open logic switch port activation strategy option as IRP and set logic switch port activation request chases option to both source and the destination node. After both of the option is set, the drop all traffic ACL will be in OBS flow firstly, and then the flow except the ingress IRP will be in OBS flow too. So during migration, if the new VM is not ready, though the OBS, the OBS keep cloning packets from source node to destination nodes, but the VM still no reply because OVS drops all the packets except IRP. But who sent the IRP? We found that QMU has some code about sending IRP. We all know that QBWord depends on LibreWord and LibreWord depends on QMU and QVM. When LibreWord tell QBWord the VM is ready, just before the time, QMU should send several packets about IRP. By using IRP, QMU make it easier for a virtual machine to join the network and, and communicate with the other devices, such as OVS. Once the OVS gets the IRP package sent by QMU, it will drop, then the, then the drop rules will be removed from OVS flow and the new VM port location should be active. The VM could reply the package. After we know the details, we start to fix bug in both KubeVert and KubeVN. And here, thanks for the work of, of Red Hat. Next, uh, we will show how KubeVN fix the bug, but KubeVN cannot fix the bug alone. You can see the image, how Kubernetes control multi chase binding of open logical switch port. First of all, Kubernetes should be told when to start migration and when to stop migration somehow. When Kubernetes start migration, Kubernetes need to know it and then find the VM logical switch port to both source and, de and destination node. After a while, when KubeWord end the migration, Kubo also need to know it. Kubo should bind the VM logic switch part to the destination node only. Besides, there are some 
routine operations, such as start VM or stop VM. Kubernetes should just, just clean VM logic switch per requested cases. If not, VM may lost the network. And that is all Kubernetes needs to handle in the code. As we all know, Kubernetes controls the entire life cycle of virtual machine live migration. Kubernetes doesn't even know about the virtual machine and Kubernetes. Kubernetes is very different. Next, Kubernetes is very different from OpenStack. Um, unlike Nova and Neutron, Nova can call Neutron RESTful API directly or use Rapid, Rapid MQ to tell Neutron to update the open logical switch part. But Kubernetes and Kubernetes are different. Kubernetes cannot tell Kubernetes directly. They are independent of each other. So next, Alan will introduce how Kubernetes do this. Okay, okay. Okay, thanks, Bingbing. Now, allow me to introduce our work on curb word. Given that the curb open controller only contains pod informer and doesn't have VMI informer, so it's unable for curb open controller to handle VMI updates actions. We can find that pod is the thing which curb open controller and curb word controller can both manage. Therefore, the exposure of migration status to pods is easy come. To address this, we need to define a series of annotations that are consistently updated in both the source and target launcher pods. The migration phase annotation signifies the start or finish of a live migration with values of success and field indicated that the outcome of the migration. Additionally, the migration target or migration source set to true to de designate whether the lib word in the launcher post serve as the source or target during the migration process. Furthermore, migration source node annotation will set to the node name for source launcher pod. Lib migration is a complex issue. Even only the control logic for lib migration of cobalt. I try to focus on today's content and just provide a simple over, overview about it. Upon the creation of the virtual machine instance migration CRD, the uh, okay, okay. the migration control the migration controller within word controller will generate a temple for target launcher pod and send create request to Kubernetes master. Once the target launcher pod is ready, word handler finds that the launcher pod on the node is a launcher pod that is in a migration. Word handler will establish proxy proxy, which will connect respective new word instance on each node. Then word handler on south node will send gRPC requests to launcher pod which will trigger live, live, live migration process from source liveword to target liveword with word domain managed to URI3 interface. Both word controller and the word handler will update the virtual machine instance migration status field of VMI status. This field indicates essential details such as the source and target nodes 
as well as the start and end time of the migration. Some of this information is obtained from the corresponding libert through the domain informer in Vault Handler. The migration controller is responsible for managing the virtual machine instance migration CRD, which also contain many migration details. This information is updated based on changes in VMI status and the migration controller logic. In, in the initial design, we chose to update the start migration phase in the port before the migration gRPC send. While we find, we, we find that this step is unnecessary. In the last implement, implementation, we rely on the upgrade to migration status in Cobalt to trigger our update producers. Specifically, we page south we pitch south launcher pod to set migration south to true before migration controller created target launcher pod and add migration target annotations to true in target implementation in target temple pod in generating in generate process before migration controller sending the creation request to Kubernetes cluster. This makes target launcher pod has re relates migration target annotations since it creates. Furthermore, we add port informer for word handler. This informer allows us to pitch migration phase for both launcher port. When migration starts, the start timestamp field in VMI status is init with new. Word handler will upgrade this field with domain informer. We will choose this moment when start time stamp, start time stamp update from near to a real time step to patch post migration phase annotations to start in both sides. Lastly, we update the migration phase to field or succeed based on the status of the phase within the virtual machine instance migration CRD updated by migration controller. We think it is a good place to mark the end of the migration. Although migration controller updates this field based on what controllers update of VMI status, and there will be a slight delay with the actual leave migration end. Fortunately, the operation of curve open to clean VMI logical switch port request chases opinion after leave migration is not high requirement of terminators. Okay. Well, that's all. While uh, we have not made huge changes, the current machinism works satisfactorily. We have achieved stable package loss time of 0 0.5 seconds with VLM and less than 0 0.1 second with VPC. This work has passed the relevant tests of a third party testing agency. By the way, we can find some duplicated package during migration. You can find further details in this issue, uh, in this issue including some discussions and raw test results as well as the code. You can find that Curve Oven has rich networking capacities of the SDN. You can miss the, if you miss the rich network capacities of the SDN edge, but are struggling to find them in the cloud native edge, Curve Oven code should be your best choice. Uh, thanks for listening. Any questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's all our talk. Uh, that was wonderful. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I don't see anything in the Q and A, um, but we'll leave it a couple of minutes because we still have some time. Um, okay. If you have anything in chat.
nothing quite yet. That could just be a sign that uh, your talk was so comprehensive that you pre um, preemptively answered all the questions anyone might have. Uh, oh, I can't okay. Okay. We have something in Q and A. Uh, is this applicable only for Linux VMs, or have you tried it for Windows VMs as well? Yes. Yes, we we passed a third party. You know, this problem is found by the third party testing agency. So we have to fix this. And we test it uh, for Windows and Linux. Another question. Have you changed the Kubert Kubert source code for this to work? Source code? Kubert source code? You mean Kubert source code? Yeah, yes, yes. We have to we have to change Kubert source code, uh, mainly to add uh, annotations on launcher pod. Yes, just as I said, that Cobo OVN doesn't have port informers or VMI informers. So we have to uh, send uh, a migration status on on launcher pod to help Cobo OVN understand that uh, this migration start or end. One last question before we wrap up. Uh, have you considered to use something else other than RARP as an indication of migration end? Mm, I can translate this for me. Mm, no, no. I have never considered to use something else. Um, Kimu send the IRP, I think it's a good design. I have never thought any better choice for for indicating VM migrate end. Wonderful. Well, thank you both very much. That was illuminating. Um, We'll, if anyone has any follow-up questions, we can move them to the virtualization chat in the Kubernetes workspace, um, as we did yesterday. Um, I'll clear this chat before we have the next presenter. Um, yeah, so thank you so much. Same.